This is The Instigators, presented by Seneca Resorts and Casinos. Nothing else comes close. We are going to overtime! Well, there's that word again, overtime. How fitting it was to hear RJ use it in his final call. And my goodness, Marty, as we dive into another episode of Instigators Overtime, presented by Seneca Resorts and Casinos, there was a special little adaptation of the really the roots of the game you can't play hockey without skates and uh, we saw something really special being used and developed by a local entrepreneur in in Matt Keeler who's going to be our guest here he's the man behind skate skins official and I before we get into Matt take us through what you're seeing at the idea of players joining goaltenders in the future with having an opportunity and a platform to show their creativity. There is so many opportunities and yes, goaltenders always had the mask and the gear and the colors and they showed personality. Uh, but I go back to when we're on the press box at key bank center and there's a picture of the first official face off at the odd between the Sabres and the Montreal Canadians, John Beliveau is the captain of the Canadians and he has his number on his skates. It was just a sticker, but even in 1970, players wanted to say, hey, these are my skates, that's my number, right? Yeah. And maybe it was for the trainers to realize it, but I think there's tremendous opportunities moving forward for the young, cool, hip crowd and the players to even use the skate skins to show what they're all about on multiple occasions, game by game, season by season. Uh, it's just great. So well said and brought me right back to my youth. The first time I was ever lucky enough to be able to get the number decal and put it on my helmet. That was like a breakthrough moment for, you know, yeah. me and my teammates. And it just felt like, oh my gosh, you're stepping up to the big leagues just for something simple like that. Imagine how the man behind this feels in this next wave of technology in Matt Keeler, who's going to join us momentarily. Of course, Matt joins us because he's serious about the game. And when you're serious about it, bet on Buffalo at the only sports books in Western New York, Seneca resorts and casinos, betting counters are open daily and self-service betting kiosks are available 24 seven at all three locations. So, whether you're visiting Seneca, Niagara, Allegheny, or Buffalo Creek, the Sports Lounge features the latest lines and multiple screens so you never miss a play. The Sports Book at Seneca Resorts and Casinos, where the love of the game meets the thrill of the win. Matt, it's really good to see you again. We crossed paths just a few weeks ago, and it's funny how quickly life moves, isn't it? Uh, your product that we just talked about off the top, I think, was... I don't know, probably just a nice little added bonus to what turned out to be another special RJ night uh, at the end of the regular season. Take us through the origins of skate skins. Yeah, well, first of all, Duffer, thanks for having me on. It's, uh, it's a privilege. I, I listen to the show very often, so it's, uh, it's great to be here with you, and I, I appreciate it. So, um, yeah, so Skate Skins uh, officially founded in March of 2020. So it's crazy to think it's been a couple of years already, but um, it's a it's a product that I, I founded along with my team that uh, allows hockey players to customize their skates. And it's a way for players to kind of step outside of their comfort zone, zone a little bit and, uh, you know, add some creativity to the, the skate component of hockey equipment. So, um, you know, a, a product I founded, like I said, in 2020. So that was really during the heart of the pandemic. So along with that, there were definitely some, uh, some challenges mm -hmm. I went through as far as, uh, you know, researching different materials and um, even to back up a little bit, it's been an idea I've had for probably four or five years uh, prior to that. So, you know, uh, just testing, uh, you know, aesthetically how I wanted the product to look, how it would fit um, all make and model skates and, and just some different features that I wanted to add to it. So, um, yeah, really during COVID, I just had the, the time and, um, you know, had the had the uh, ability really just to to go hard in it and, and bring it to life. So, um, you know, with that, it was uh, definitely some challenging times we went through as as rinks were closed. So I wasn't really able to test the product on ice. So I was doing some uh, extreme things like, you know, putting the skates underwater in my bath, to putting them in the freezer just to you know, do some unique stuff just to see how it would hold up over time. And, you know, I had probably nine or 10 different pairs of skates in my shop, just, uh, you know, testing fits and whatnot. But yeah, it's, it's crazy to think of where it is now and uh, kind of the overall direction that we want to want to go with it. What do you think, uh, or what do you recall was 
the thinking that that led you into taking action on this? I mean, as someone who's not uh, embraced an entrepreneurial spirit yet in my life, maybe there's time yet. Uh, I'm fascinated by how you found an idea and and ran with it. Yeah, yeah, it's a great question. I think uh, I think ultimately it just goes back to to how I had the idea for so long, and it just just kind of stuck with me. Where you know I would I would try it here and there, and then I would kind of fail with it, and then I would pick back up on it, and I couldn't figure it out. And I, there were a lot of times during that where I was you know at standstills with it. So. Um, I think looking back in the entire process, just, just, you know, per being persistent with those hurdles and trying to get through all those, um, you know, really, really helped bring it to where it is today. And, you know, even backing up a little bit, it used to be a half shape. Now it's a full shape and I see Marty's in here now too. So, oh yeah, that's going to get good. <laughs> but, uh, so, I mean, when you, how did you get it from idea into prototype? Like what? that's what fascinates me because I would sit there and go, how do you get there? Like, who do you know? How do you knock down those walls to get it to early stage production prototype, if you will? Yeah. Yeah. It was really just so much trial and error and just testing different materials, even to back up a little bit. Um, you know, the inception of the product, I wanted to just black out my skates. I didn't really like the graphics I had in my skates. They were peeling and whatnot. So I went online and tried to find a material similar to Kydex or uh, an NHL grade shot blocker that guys you and use in the league now. And I really couldn't find anything, you know, so I went on Amazon, I was testing different foams and materials and, um, you know, probably tested 12 or 15 of them on my skates. And uh, the one I really liked, it was funny. It shipped from Buffalo. Um, so it was kind of meant to be there. So um, that's, that's been our supplier ever since. And, you know, just from the, the customization aspect, um, you know, just going back to the, the trial and error, I was just, I was playing around with different ideas. I would, I would try something and then fail. And then I would try something else and that would fail. And then, um, you know, really the breakthrough or the, the Eureka moment came when I was, uh, I tested one thing and then I got so upset with it. I just gave up completely and I came back to it in the morning and it was like, all, all I had to do was wait six hours for like the next step I needed to, to customize it. So it really, I think, just came down to like me, you know, staying persistent with the development of it over time, and um, you know, it's it's always it's always still improving and changing, and uh, I think even a year from now will be a little different too. I know all the players want to be like the goaltenders, so that's their way of showing their colors and maybe their personality uh, and all of it. But uh, you know, you you talk about obviously the skate skins, but. It, is there other project you're working on and where would you take that? Maybe I'm talking about goalie mask or helmets decals or, or whatnot that maybe will fit in the same, uh, same kind of category. Yeah. It's funny, Marty. I, I used to be a goalie from the time I was probably four to eight when I was just getting involved in hockey. And, uh, my dad tells a funny story. I, uh, I was playing goal in mites one time and I, I think I let up about six goals in the period. And, he told, he told me I came to the bench and told him I had a stomach ache. So they, they pulled me out of that. I think I faked the stomach ache and that was the end of my goalie career. So we all do that. Don't worry. We all do that. So, so. sometimes it was legit. I could, I can vouch yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I've always been fascinated in, in goalie mask and just the flair of equipment, just, just the creativity that they're allowed to express on ice. And, and uh, you know, skates was really the first thing I went, I went hard in, but, um, but yeah, I think, I think there's totally opportunity to do stuff with possibly helmets. Like we saw, um, experimented in the winter classics, maybe, maybe stick wraps eventually. Um, I do some yeah. jersey manufacturing right now, um, you know, with some local teams. And, um, so I, I think eventually, yeah, we're, we're definitely going to branch the company off into to different segments of the equipment for sure. Wow. This is amazing. You're opening up so many discussion avenues here and I'm so excited. And I know Marty is too, to talk about all this stuff and every true hockey geek, because we love to use that word, whether it's statistical based or equipment based, you know, you've got this captive audience, Matt, it's really exciting. So what's the biggest challenge here? You, <laughs> I, I, I kind of laugh at asking the question because you just documented really going headlong into this right at the start of a pandemic, which in itself would be a massive challenge, but how do you get it to the next level? Obviously, there has to be massive costs seemingly involved to allow it to be accepted at the highest level in sports. Take us through, you know, everything you're looking at right now. Yeah, 
for sure. I, I like to think that maybe the hard part is done already, right? Where, you know, we've gotten it to the point where it's actually a physical product now. It's tested, it's proven at, at some of the highest levels. Some of the, the top players are endorsing it. So, you know, I would say right now our, our biggest challenge is, is trying to get it, you know, as a breakthrough into the NHL on ice as a product. Um, you know, I think with that comes through, you know, different conversations I've, I've had with the hockey ops department and um, just when they're going to be ready for this sort of expression to take place on ice, because I think it's evident that we've seen it in, in other leagues and that it works really well, like the NBA and the NFL. Um, I think we're just, I think we're just waiting for hockey to get to that point where, you know, it's accepted by, you know, executives and, and ultimately fans around the sport that they want to see this sort of, uh, you know, product breakthrough on NHL ice. And um, I think for me and my team personally, I, I think we just have to keep, keep doing what we're doing right now is, is chipping away and, you know, finding different players that, that think the product is really cool and they want to endorse it like Darlene and, and some different guys we've worked with across the league. And, um, you know, I have a, I have a, you know, pretty um, relationship I've built, I've built with some people at the NHL and internally, they just, they tell me to, to keep dripping on them is what they say is, uh, you know, keep, keep doing these things that uh, almost has the NHL, you know, they can't look away from it. It's, it's taking place on their ice. It's their players that are, um, you know, kind of advocating for it. So I think uh, the more we can just keep dripping on them, the, the, the more we'll see, uh, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel. So in the early 70s, the California Golden Seals had the white skates. It was spray painted. It was heavy. It was awful. But now I'm thinking, are you more open to a team concept where, you know, the Buffalo Sabres as a team all have the same look on their skates or the individual side and saying certain players just having their own personality shine? Like what is more attractive to you? To me, I, I think in the long run, the individuality would be more attractive. But I think yep. uh, I think the reality of it and, and understanding what the traditional realm of hockey is, is more of the team aspect. Um, you know, guys having individual, uh, sorry, sorry, having, you know, team logos on the skates, but also having like individual numbers too, where it still yep. has a team component where, you know, it, it expresses uniformity. Um, nobody's ac actually extra different or has anything uh that's out of the ordinary on their skates so i think uh you know just right now looking at you know past projects we, we've worked on and whatnot i think uh i think the team component has been really popular but i think people as they're as they're starting to um you know understand what the potential of the product could be i think it just you know um changes the narrative ultimately of like what the uh overall potential of the product could look like so that's been cool i just think duffer quickly like you know we do hockey fights cancer every year and what an opportunity to get purple and name of different cancer survivors or people in the fight around and and that individuality could go again through charity auctions where the skates are auctioned off with the the skate skins on i just think there's so many opportunities both in the teams and the individual aspect of it, as you just pointed out, Matt, that's great. Uh, Matt, just think, I mean, I know you've thought of this, so I'm stating the obvious here, but there's no reason a player can't change it multiple times in a game, correct? Yeah, exactly. So if he's fighting for three different people on Hockey Fights Cancer Night, every period he's got somebody else's name. And, and you, I know a lot of people try to absorb as much as they can from the game. And it's, it's hard. It sounds ridiculous because it's a hobby. But there are so many great stories every single night. And, and what preceded RJ Night was your connection with the Coyotes and Barrett Hayton and, and the acknowledgement of two absolutely enormous people in their organization, in their community yeah. that succumb to cancer. Like this is, this is all out there. I'm, I, I, I get so excited talking among the three of us here about this. I mean, this, this must be incredible to be a part of what can happen here. Yeah, exactly. It's what I like to say. It's just a blank canvas for your skates. Really. It's, it's whatever you can come up with and however you want to spin it or whatever your imagination can come up with is what the product ultimately can be. And, and yeah, working with Barrett, um, you know, from the initial call that I had with him and the coyotes, it was, uh, 
really trying to get to know him as a player, what he's, what he's like off the ice, what kind of brands he's interested in. Um, and the first thing he said right away was that there's two individuals that he wants to honor as a tribute to his, his skin. And, uh, you know, that was really what ultimately we made the com entire design around. Um, so I have a product of it right here. So yeah, we did the uh, tribute to, to Matt and Layton and, um, we did the, the Yotes logo on the outside. So, but yeah, Duffer, back to what you were saying too, the, the product is completely removable. So it allows you to take it off and you can reapply it. So, I mean, yeah, there's, there's times that, you know, maybe, maybe a guy wants to wear them for one period and, and take them off. But yeah, so you can completely take them off like this. And then when the product's off, it's, uh, it's got a pressure sensitive adhesive. So it really bonds to the contour on the newer skates where they have, uh, you know, a little bit more of a, a contour right there, but yeah, super easy to put back on and uh, they reapply pretty nicely. So. Wow. wow. Is, is there a challenge for you? Because obviously you got Bauer, CCM, True, Graphs, you got so many different brands of skates. Like, is that a big challenge to try to have the, the template for every single skates or does one template work on everyone? Yeah, so we have a universal shape. So there's one template for, for all skates. I think eventually we want to, you know, create a few templates that, uh, you know, people can go onto our website and choose different models they have or whatnot. But, but yeah, just going back to like the inception of it, I just, I had so many skates in my shop. I had true CCMs. I had like, you know, an old pair of tacks. I just had like so many pairs <laughs> that I was testing the, the shape on. Um, and, you know, some of my buddies can attest to this, like, I would, I destroyed some of their skates. Like some of the original adhesives we use, man, I ripped the graphics clean off. Huh. So huh. <laughs> it's- Hey Matt, <laughs> we, we all did that to every form of equipment we ever had when we were younger, right? I yeah. mean, oh my gosh, the alterations we would do. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah. I know, man, it's crazy to think about, but um, but yeah, the, the shape is really unique and the adhesive is- it's not super sexy, but it's it's one of the the, the most uh, beneficial factors I think of the product. Just uh, you know the way that you're allowed to put it on and take it off, and it doesn't leave any residue adhesive on there. Marty, that was a great question you asked, though, just about the specific. You know, what's the word I'm looking for? Specifications. The, the, yeah, well, that or the. <laughs> I'm not even going to try it because of what I'm about to say here. But you're asking every, me for English lessons. That's why I can't even speak now because I'm laughing hysterically. <laughs> but the every skate has different specifications as far as you know how it was so when you asked if there was kind of a universal i'm i'm just envisioning like this whole engineering process and how you know you would have had to i'm i'm happy to hear that it seems to be kind of standard for all because i can only imagine the nightmare of just having literally like what one thirty second of a an inch or something like that you know that you're that you're contouring differently from one skate company to another so that has to be a blessing for you for sure and yeah the biggest thing about it when i was first creating is that i wanted to make it as easy for the customer to pull them out of the box and just apply them to their skate i didn't want there to be any heat involved or additional additional accessories that you needed to to help apply it so yeah i think uh i think the shape ultimately comes back to like the ease of use where um it's really easy for anybody to put on if if you put it on and you want to rep reposition it or you don't like the placement of it it's really easy to take off um without making it permanent and without damaging anything um so my dad makes fun of me because i put a toothpick in the bottom of each packaging and uh, we have a video on youtube that um you know walks you through like the removal process because you use the toothpick to like get under the edge of the skin so you rip it up and you don't peel the customization layer off and uh He's like, you know, you should really call it a, a wooden removal tool. You shouldn't necessarily call it a toothpick. It sounds a little better, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's little stuff like that, that, uh, you know, I've, I've tried to try to just make it as easy as possible for, for the user to, to put them on. So, so the RJ ones were amazing and the Barrett Hayden one are cool. Like they, but out of, outside the NHL, uh, what is the best one? What's the most, your, your most favorite one that you guys have done? Ooh, that's a good that's a good question um outside of the nhl ones i don't know i think i think uh i think the ones that that we wear in like in men's league are like some of the favorite ones i wear because you can't, you can't have them like super flashy they can't be overly loud but 
I think we try and make, we try and find like cool sports logos and, and different, you know, hockey logos, maybe in the, the QMJHL or just like random yeah. logos that we use that we think are cool that maybe don't get a lot of recognition that, uh, you know, we try and use for like our men's league and stuff. So, man, we've got some, uh, we've got some crazy designs that, that we've created over the past couple of years. And um, I just went through an apartment move this weekend. So um, I wish I could have showed you guys my old shop, but we had them all over the walls and everything. And uh, um, I'm sure my landlord's probably going cool. <laughs> right now and uh, repairing. He's going to have to go through a bunch of toothpicks <laughs> yeah. like, to get those off the walls. I, 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 I'm fearing for your damage deposit, your security deposit. Yeah, it's pending still. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. uh, hey, Matt, honestly, we need to know more about the Sabre one though. Like how did you establish the relationship connection with, with, with Darlene? How did it evolve into the RJ designs that we saw on Friday? It, it, it was beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I've gotten to know Darlene pretty well um, from when he, he first was drafted by the Sabres. So I own a, another company called just dish. And, and what we do there is our mission ultimately overall is to, to uh, help these players as a creative service company um, to help, um, the sport of hockey as as I said, is super traditional. Basically, we work with players one on one, whether it's, you know, design and manufacturing for apparel brands or, um, you know, social media help that we do. Um, so I got to know Darlene pretty well when we took him up on the roof of Seneca one and we did a shoot up there and we did a video that um, my buddy Nick Cavarella 716 Nick made um, kind of in promotion of the new season that he he released uh, a couple of years ago and uh, um, so I've gotten to know Darlene pretty well through that. And, um, you know, it's funny, we, we joke about like, like, we write all his captions too. So Darlene will text us and be like, Hey, what should I caption this? And we'll like, we'll help him help him with the creative content and, and copy there. But no, I've gotten to know Darlene through that. And I feel like, uh, you know, he's really, uh, you know, been able to, to trust what we do, um, you know, on the hockey side of things, just because I think he sees that it comes through as, as pretty authentic and just with working through different players without the league and whatnot. Um, so he saw the Barrett ones and then he hit me up and he was like, dude, we should do something for RJ. Like, I think, you know, a few of my teammates would, would be really interested in that. And I was like, damn, okay, well, let's, let's see how quick we can do a design. So um, I instantly called my buddy, Jared Halt, who runs the charging Buffalo. And uh, I was explaining it to him. I was like, dude, we got like a 10 hour turnaround. We got to do this for Darlene. He wants to wear him tomorrow night. And uh, we we're like, okay, let's make it happen. So we kind of brainstormed a, you know, a design we want to do. Jerry came up with a really great idea of, uh, you know, recreating the top shelf RJ design from, uh, from way back when. And we took the highlight reel from there and we included, you know, some of his most legendary calls and put the stills into the artwork and uh, the design came to life and, man, so many helping hands went into that just because it was, it was such a quick turnaround. I could go through the entire list. This probably will turn into a, a shout out segment, but from Jared to Nick to Kyle Wittick, who helped me with the original Barrett design, my buddy, Chad, Ben, Derek Tudor Hopford, that's like my entire team that helped me, you know, put it together. But, um, but yeah, we did it. We went over, I, I, uh, drove over to, over to Darlene's house, uh, around two o'clock on game day. And I was like, Hey, I'm going to be there at like two. And, uh, he hit me back and he was like, okay, that's like usually when I take a nap. So I'll have my girlfriend. <laughs> <off him off." laughs> so I was like, okay, well, I'll just, you know, I'll, when I, when I get there, I'll hit you up and I'll, I'll have, I'll drop him off to your girlfriend. So uh, I got there. I like, I kind of knocked on the door and I like looked in and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, he's probably sleeping. I'm just going to leave him outside. So I left him outside, but I looked inside and I was like, uh, there's like, there are like five pairs of shoes, like in the hallway. And it was, they're like dunks and Nikes. And they're, you know, like when you go to a buddy's house and like all your shoes are like in yeah. the entryway. And I was thinking to myself, like, did they, did they do like team naps at Darlene's house or what? Like, they're just like, there are so many pairs of shoes right there. And I was like, I'm not even going to ask him. I just left him at the doorway. And uh, it was funny guys. He, he, uh, when he rode it on that scooter, they were in his backpack. So, uh, I hit up Jared I was, and Nick. I was like, dude, he's, he's going to wear them. And then uh, me and my wife, Alexis, went to the game. And um, I can't remember the last time we went to watch warm-ups, but we were running the glass. I was like a kid again. And, uh, you know, we were just waiting. I knew they were in the hallway. And I, I looked at my <laughs> wife and I was like, wow, if they, if they come out with these skins, this is going to be such a milestone moment. And before you knew it, it was like Tuck, Olufsen, uh, Darlene, Yoki Haru. And I just looked at my wife and I was like, 
this is the craziest moment of my life. <laughs> so, so was, how many did you guys make? Uh, we made how 10 pairs. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we, we dropped them all off to Darlene's house. Yep. So he's the one passing them around the locker room. Hey, here you go. Here you go. Well, so, now we know who his uh, closest friends are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so um, let it. me ask you this. You say it took 10 hours and obviously like you guys put a, a rush on it. Usually like if I am to order a, uh, you know, a set of skins for my skates or whatnot, how long does it take uh, to get back? Like just as a, as a customer. Yeah, so it, um, when you order online, it takes about one to three days for a design. And then um, turnaround time for production is about 10 to 12 days. Oh, wow. So, yeah. That's really quick. Yeah. Really and we, quick. I'm we, thinking we, like a goalie uh, equipment is like eight to 12 weeks uh, running now. So if somebody orders goalie gear, it's like three months later, you'll get them maybe. Uh, so, wow, that's really, really quick. Yeah. So so we make them all in-house. I think that's what really helps our, our turnaround time and uh, – just, just one thing I was really thankful for during COVID when everything was shut down, factories and whatnot, I think it kind of just like forced our hand to be able to make them in Buffalo. So I think that uh, attributes to the production time for sure. Marty, you're going to laugh at what I'm about to say. The entire time during this interview, especially when you started talking about where else this could be applied on other forms of equipment, I'm sitting here listening to every word you say, Matt, and all I'm thinking is what Gord Deneen, who was then the Amherst assistant coach, used to say about Will Morgan, who still remains one of my favorite Saber prospects of all time, and that was <laughs> limitless. I truly believe that this is limitless. I, I am so excited for this product. I'm, I'm excited that we're sitting here talking to you about something that yeah, I had a chance run in with you in person, but largely social media brought this to light at the last moment, which compelled us to push it even quicker, almost instantaneously on the broadcast. Yep. I'm really excited by your, your platforms right now. And, and I, I hope you're, you and your group, everybody that you just mentioned feels that right now. Yeah. Well, that means a lot Duffer. I've, I appreciate that. And I think one thing that we, we strive to do the most is uh, our social media content. And, uh, you know, that's another tip of our hat to our entire team, just because I think, uh, you know, with, with how visual the product is, um, we really strive on social media as far as, you know, teaching our customers how to install them, teaching them just like, like you said, the limitless opportunity of the product as a whole, and just, you know, trying to inspire the imagination of hockey players in general. So, um yeah it, it, I can tell you firsthand it was not easy at first you know having a product that you know was disrupting hockey culture as a whole um you know so many kids were uh you know maybe not accepting of the product just because it's not cool to be different in our sport it's not really accepted to to do anything you know outside of the the team game but I think just trying to educate our base and our customer um base as a whole is just like it's okay to be different. You can still be a team player. And uh, it's been funny to watch the evolution of the comments kind of change where, you know, as before we had, you know, comments that were like, nobody's ever going to wear those. Those will never, you know, make it to the top level. And just now like posting this stuff with pride and then, you know, having, you know, some of our day one fans, you know, clap back at people and be like, yo, did you see the Coyotes wore those last week or the Sabres? It's like, like you said, Duffer, limitless. I, I think that's I think that's a great term because just like we're almost in the infancy of it still right now, where who knows where it could be in in five years, and you know we have pretty lofty goals for ourselves. But I think just the overall uh, journey of everything has been has been really fun to lead and and be a part of for sure. And you say limitless. Um, I'm thinking, is there? We talked about other products, but other leagues, other like cleats and you know shoes and basketball and baseball and football and other sports like where you're you're thinking like this will also be a way to uh, to express uh, personalities and in, in in individuals. Yeah, absolutely. It's funny when we were moving out of our apartment this past weekend. My my buddies were. Uh, 
playing jokes. They ripped them all off the walls and they started putting them on their shoes and we're walking around and they were like, <laughs> they're like, I don't know. It's just a, a big joke because we made like some Travis Scott's we've made different Nikes in the past. And they were like, yo, I got these red ones and like these Jordan fives. And we're, I was just thinking to myself and I was like, please don't ever do that again. So it was just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's so some classics you can't mess with, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, you, just, man. you just can't do that. And, and yeah, I mean, um, I think, I think like how the product is made and just like, um, I think just the opportunity of like the material that we use can be used for so many different things, like from hard hats to like bumper stickers. I think it just could like really stretch beyond hockey. Um, who knows, maybe it'll, you know, reach into other sports with, with different equipment. Um, but I think time will tell with that for sure. Yeah. All right, we are really tight for time, and you have my 100% promise here. I want to do this repeatedly. When you're seeing opportunities, advancements, new connections, especially Buffalo related, let's let's keep further in this discussion, if that's okay with you, Matt. Absolutely, I would love. To. And, and 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 Marty and I normally end with a three star segment here, kind of looking back in the past, you know, seven days or whatever. We're gonna put the pressure on you here. As we wind down this podcast, three players in the NHL that you would love to attach this product to. That's a great question. I would say number one would be Austin Matthews. I think, yeah. I think, uh, you know, just getting able to know him over the, the, the past uh, few months that I've been able to know him. Uh, obviously he signed to CCM, but maybe, maybe opportunity will present itself in the, the future there. Um, I would say, I would say Matthews would be at the top of the list. Um, two other guys I'll have to think of, let me think, uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to get hammered for this because he's another leaf, but I would say William Nylander, um, <laughs> another, another guy that, uh, Willie Stiles, what can you say? Like that's his nickname. So yeah, um, that would be another guy for sure. And then, uh, I would say uh, my third guy would, would probably be Clayton Keller. Um, him coming yeah. back off his injury next year, who knows what um, that opportunity could turn into, but I would say he'd probably be my third guy for sure. Yeah, I'm glad you, you said you that. You only said Austin Matthews because you want to do a Bieber one. That's probably the reason, right? <laughs> yeah. He probably has done a Bieber one. Yeah, outside of hockey, Bieber would probably be the guy I would try and tap into for sure. <laughs> awesome. Matt, give us, uh, give our audience a quick uh, plug of, of where they can find you. Yeah, I appreciate that. We're uh, Skate Skins official on Instagram. We're Real Skate Skins on Twitter. Um, and then Justition, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, we're everywhere on there. So, yep. love it. Thank you. This has been awesome. We appreciate you guesting with us and uh, we'll see you soon. All right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Appreciate having me. Folks, thanks for being with us on this installment of Instigators Overtime, presented by our friends at Seneca Resorts and Casinos.